Okay, everybody ready? Okay. Yeah. Go on. This is a still 3.10 chainsaw. We know this because it simply says still 3.10 right here. Oh. You're going to get asked that. How do you know it's a still 3.10? Well, it says right there. You can barely see it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the front of the saw and work my way around from the back of the saw. But first, we're going to start off with some specs. It's a still 3.10 chainsaw. Two-stroke engine, air-cooled, um, and it's five horsepower. Sorry, four horsepower. Five horsepower is the, uh, the K750. Now, the idle RPM is 2,800. The clutch engages at 3,000. And the maximum RPM is 12,500. And like I said before, it's a two-stroke engine and it's air-cooled. An advantage of a two-stroke engine is that it can be held at any angle and the saw will work no matter what because the, um, the lubrication system, when you mix the 50 to 1. Um, another advantage of a two-stroke engine is that it functions at a higher RPM and it fires off at every revolution. This advantage of a two-stroke engine is that it has uh, a shorter lifespan than uh, the emissions. The emissions are uh, uh, there's a lot of emissions that come out of this are bad for the environment. Okay, so those are the specs. This is your saw, or this is your uh, your. Uh, chain. This is what does all of your cutting and this is the only way your saw cuts. I'm doing this like nobody's ever seen a chainsaw before. Now there's three types of chains. Standard, carbide, and bullet. This is your chain. This is your guide bar. The guide bar is 20 inches. This is your cutter. This is your chipper. This is your cutter. There's a total of 36 teeth, 18 on the left, 18 on the right, and 72 drive lengths. The main purpose of all this is to drive, cut, guide, and lubricate. Those are four main things. If you work your way back, right here, you can zoom in on that, that's your bumper spike. That's used in the logging industry. Something at the fire academy you're really not going to be dealing with. Now, this is your front handle guard, this is your rear, and this is your uh, front handle. Front handle guard not only serves as a front handle, but it's also your chain brake. And right below it is your muffler. Right here is your chain tensioning. The general rule is the dime's distance between your uh, between your bar and your drive lines. Now right here is your oilomatic chain adjuster. Let me say that again, oilomatic adjuster. This limits the amount of oil you're gonna put into your, uh, to your guide part. To the left, uh, more, to the right, less. Very simple. Now right here is your chain catcher. In the event that the chain breaks, this prevents the chain from hitting you. Very simple. If you look right here, you guys can't tell, there's two little plastic ports. This is what actually oils the chain, and it's the chain oiler. There's a few names for it, but that's what it does. That's what's uh, oiling the chain itself. Now right here is also the centrifugal clutch, the chain sprocket, and the chain sprocket cover. Now what the centrifugal clutch does, this actually spins the chain. And that in return is the only mechanism that the chain will spin. So um, if you look, The chain is connected to these little uh, little divots, and it spins. That's how the chain is spun, and that's how in return you cut. Um, see anything else I'm forgetting right here? Um, also, the chain brake works by cr by clasping the centrifugal clutch, and so if you notice the chain brake, this is the chain brake off. This is the chain brake on. The chain brake will clutch, the centrifugal clutch, and therefore the chain will not spin. So if I'm cutting, I have the chain brake on, and I'm cutting and it kicks back, unless I don't have an arm, my arm itself is going to uh, set the brake. Now there's two types of brakes. There's an inertia brake and there's a chain brake, the manual in which I just showed you. Inertia brake is something that I've been told that you really don't come across. Um, acquaintances of mine have worked in the logging industry, working at uh, Christmas tree yards, and they've never had the chain break uh, or the inertia break kick. The inertia break works that if this saw kicks back fast enough, the brake will, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of the word, engage automatically. Now, this chain break basically is the uh, your main mechanism of safety. So if I'm cutting on the roof and it kicks back, that's what's going to save you from getting cut. Okay, now this is your uh, carburetor adjustment. Carburetor adjustment is something you really don't use it as a cadet. 
Um, but it's something you know and you know it's there. So high idle and low idle. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Now, this is your uh, rear handle and your rear handle guard, your throttle interlock. And if you notice, my throttle won't move unless I press this thin lock down. That's how it works. Now, this is your twist lock. What your twist lock does and the primary purpose is it gives you access to your pre-filter, your main filter, and your spark plug, and your carburetor. The spark plug gap is 0 .020. This is your pre-filter, this is your main filter. Pre-filter, pretty simple, lights up with water and airbrush. Main filter, you want to use with an airbrush. Um, also is located here is your carburetor. Now, for short terms as a drill is concerned, your carburetor, what it does is it limits the amount of fuel to oxygen ratio that goes into your engine or into your system. Different end you can call it. Um, which brings me to the master control, which has a direct correlation with the carburetor. Cold start, if you want to zoom in, this is cold start all the way down. This is high fuel, low oxygen ratio. Warm start, a little bit better ratio of fuel to air. And obviously, run is run and off is off. Very simple. Cold start, warm start, run and off. Cold start, another term is choke. So you can keep that in mind. Now, I don't know if I said this earlier, but this takes 50 to 150 parts gasoline and one part oil. In the still 310, it, um, it holds 18.9 ounces. And you know this is, um, this is where your uh, <coughs> fuel goes because you have your your gas tank and your drop, which means your premix 50 to 1. Now, right here, simply twist the black, turn it, it comes out. Same thing with your chain. The chain holds 11.5, I'm sorry, 11.2 ounces of still bar oil. In the event that you do not have any still bar oil, you simply use 30 weight oil. However, after you use it, you want to the system and put it out of service. Now right here is your starter grip, flywheel, flywheel cover. You may also hear the term starter handle. Make sure you know both. Now what the flywheel does is that it sends an electrical charge to the spark plug, which in return creates combustion in the cylinder. Now there's a stationary and a moving magneto. And that in return creates the electrical charge, which gets sent to the spark plug, which in return um, creates the combustion in the cylinder. Okay, right here, here's your magneto, and through an electrical charge it goes up to the spark plug. And right here is where your uh, stationary is, and here's your moving magneto right here. Now, another function of the flywheel is to cool the system, or to, uh, to cool the engine, if you will. It's a primary mechanism of cooling the engine. Now, cover the flywheel, cover the oil type, cover the fuel type, <coughs> cover the chain brake, cover the muffler. Now, what I'm going to go into now is troubleshooting. The saw isn't starting, well, why isn't starting? How I like to say is start from the basic and work your way up. Very simple. Is the chain brake on or off? That may mitigate your situation right then and there. Or go to more advanced. Well, chain brake's off. That might not be the reason why. Is my spark plug glued in? That could be your issue in and of itself. Then, for more... Uh, complicated, what position do you have it on? Do you have it on cold start? Do you have it on warm start? Or do you have it on run or off? You can't figure out why your saw is starting. You look, things on off. Right then and there, that's another issue why your saw may not start. Now, one of the main things is checking if you have your adequate bar oil and or adequate uh, fuel. Now, with the fuel, check the fuel and the bar oil at the exact same time no matter what. And right here, you just simply look, like I said before, twist off, see if there's oil, see if there's fuel, which in here there isn't. And same thing right here. This in and of itself can be your largest mitigation of your problem. If you're on scene, if you're on the roof, but most importantly, you're doing ventilation and you're uh, figuring out why your saw isn't starting. Now, in the event that all of this is fine, your spark plugs in, your chain brakes on or off, um, you have them in the right position, you have optimum fuel, you have optimum uh, bar oil, let's go to more advanced. If this saw isn't starting, most likely you flooded it. At a cadet level, 
and at, if you're entry level like me who has no experience with the saw, most likely you flooded it. And what you need to do is you need to have two people. Can I get one person? Anybody? Robles? Come here. And you, you need to uh, hold this. Put your hand on the trigger. Like this? Yeah. <clears throat> Take the brake off. Put your foot down. So you have it in run position or how? You have it in run. Correct. And you keep pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. Yeah. Until it starts. Yeah. It generally works. Run. Now, um, what Firefighter Fish said is that this way is um, throughout the Real Hondo Fire Academy is uh, accepted and all the instructors know this way to mitigate that problem. So that would be a way to kind of solve your troubleshooting issues. Now, it won't start the greatest and it won't run the greatest. You'll see a lot of white smoke shooting out of the engine. But then it'll eventually get all that, uh, those fumes and all those vapors out of the engine and then from there it'll start. So as far as troubleshooting is concerned, that's the issue. Now we're gonna go on to maintenance. The bar, every time you do any maintenance on the bar, uh, general rules weekly, monthly, and after each use, you wanna flip the bar and you wanna inspect the chain. You wanna flip the bar so you get equal wear and tear on the bar. You wanna flip the chain, or not flip the chain, but inspect the chain for uh, three missing in a row or six total chains, or six total teeth. Very simple. Um, as far as the pre filter is concerned, make sure you, uh, like this one, it's pretty dirty. Even the pre-filter in and of itself. Um, get an airbrush, clean it out. Same thing with the main filter and the spark plug. Make sure you get an airbrush and clean all that out. Um, if you can, we have a little walk here at the academy where you can actually clean the saw and oh. get, <coughs> get all the grime out of it. Hey, what are the safeties? Are you going to finish? He's talking too much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, another, uh, another thing to do is when a, when you start the saw, you gotta make sure you uh, shake it up to get the uh, premix all so it's not all binded together. Um, now, any other maintenance, you just wanna basically inspect it and wipe everything off. Now, Mr. Torres, safety. Safety is your largest priority when you use the saw. Um, you can always have your right PPE, right tool for the right job, and make sure you have a circle of safety. Right PPE, for us, means you have full turnouts. Uh, eye protection, preferably anti-approved. Now, um, by far the biggest safety is the chain itself. Make sure every time you use the saw, you have your chain brake on. And every time I switch hands, say if I'm cutting like this, and I have to cut the other way, engage the brake, and use it again. Very simple. Make sure you always have your brake on when you're not using the saw. Now, um, other safety issues, make sure the person or the people around you not only know that you're using this saw, but they have their PPE on as well. It does you no good if you're in full PPE and the guy right behind you isn't in full PPE. You have the possibility of hurting. Now another safety concern is when you're cutting, make sure you do not cut in line with your body. Do not cut like this. Cut to the side of your body. Therefore, you won't be cutting your lone leg off. Um, other than that, just general safety concerns. Make sure you're aware of everything, aware of what's going on, and uh, and obviously don't cut over your head. And, you know, be smart with the saw. That being said, that's the drill. What about the 21 parts?